Hey, do me a favor today. I know it's cold. Everybody take your hands out. Clap them around a little bit. Shake them out a little bit. Put your left hand in. Put your left hand out. Put your left hand in. And shake it all about. Dance a little bit. Um, we're going to jump in, and this set list was specifically chosen um, just as memories and uh, songs that I feel and I felt connected with you guys. This is uh, the last Sunday that I get to join you guys as the leader, and it's been an absolute honor and privilege to lead worship with you guys for the last three years, and I thank you so much for that. And uh, as we jump into some of these songs, these are the songs that I was singing like, what did we connect with as a church? And through the highs and lows of the last three years that we've been in, these are some of the songs that I felt were declarative, were heartfelt, and were uh, meaningful. So I'm, what I'd ask is even though we're cold, if we could just lift up a shout of praise and lift up a praise offering this morning. Um, we're going to pray real quick. Heavenly Father, God, we're so grateful for who you are and what you are and what you're doing, what you continue to do, and what you're going to do in our church, in our church family, God, in our community. God, this morning we just ask that you come in and inhabit the praises of your people. God, sweep in. God, Holy Spirit, come fill this place. sorrow and dead in my sin and lost without hope with no place to begin and your love made a way to let mercy come in but when death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed, only beauty remained. In my orphan heart, and my morning grew quiet, and my feet rose to dance. The wind death was arrested, and my life began. Would you sing with me this morning? Oh, your grace is so free, washes over me. You have made me new, now life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down. Release from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. And my shame was a ransom, he faithfully bore. He canceled my debt, and you called me your It's 
So let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run. The mountain I drink from. Lord, you are my song. too late to introduce a new song. Um, about four months ago, I heard this song, and it was one that uh, I knew as soon as I heard it, I wanted this one to be the last um, song that we did together as a, in my position, and the song's called The Blessing, and I want you to hear my heart where I'm coming from in this song. It's been so much fun to come up every Sunday. I feel so honored to be up here every Sunday leading you guys and seeing you guys grow and pushing and singing and dancing. And Matt, thank you so much for everything that you've done for me. I appreciate it. Um, my little girl's getting blown over there. But when I heard this song, it was my prayer for you guys. Whether I know your name, whether I don't, whether we've hung out together, whether we haven't. I've watched you guys come in and out of the gate for the last two months. I've watched you come in and out of the doors for the last three years. And it's meant a lot to me. And it's blessed me incredibly. And this song is taken from Scripture. It's right out of the Word. And it says, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. And the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And then it goes on from that, because this is my what I believe the church is. It's not just a group of people, but it's our children, and it's our children's children, and it's the community, and we come together, and we grow, and we come together, and we reproduce, right? And we have things that go on, and, and our church service is not just here, but it's in the child care, it's in our small groups, it's in everything that we do at, at our church. And the, court, the bridges talk about may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your families and your families and your children and their children. And so from my heart to yours, that's my prayer is that God blesses you unconditionally and that you continue to pour out what's going on in your life and you continue to seek his face in all that you do. So if you would just receive this, and this is my prayer for you guys. Yeah. 
your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. just so awesome and we thank you so much for everything that you're doing in our community and our church God and our families and I thank you so much for the opportunity that I've had to lead and to be a part of this church and this congregation and God of my prayers that you continue to bless every single person that enters our doors that hears our words God that's even an earshot of right now God I pray that every person that hears this God is blessed beyond measure God continue to pour out on us blessings. God, continue to pour out on us your favor, God. Continue to pour out on us your direction. God, continue to open up our hearts to receive your word and to put it into action, God. We love you so much and we thank you so much. It's your name we pray. Amen. At this time, the kids can go ahead and go on to Children's Church. If you guys want to go ahead and air high five someone, air elbow someone, but take a minute right now to at least introduce yourself to the people around you and say hi. All right, good morning, everyone. I'm so glad that you guys are here today. Um, it's so good to see you all. My name is Matt Wolf. I'm the lead pastor here at Stapleton Church. That's the last time I'm going to say that. Stapleton Church. Isn't that interesting? Okay, yeah, this is a big day of transitions. I'm glad you guys are here. If you're new, and uh, I'm glad that you're here. We do want to connect with you. We do something really special here at our church that it, for every new person who goes to stapletonchurch.com slash new and fills out that form, we give $5 to the Denver Rescue Mission on your behalf. So you get to help homeless people get a meal, get a place to stay. So please do that. We want to connect with you and get to know you. Um, but today is a day with, of a bunch of transitions, a bunch of things changing um, with our church. And the first one, you've heard Bobby. Come, come on over here, Bobby. Um, share. This is his last Sunday as our worship director. And hasn't Bobby done an incredible job? He's wearing sunglasses, so you can't see his tears, but you can see mine, I'm sure. Um, 
Uh, I love Bobby. Not only has he, he been an excellent worship director for the last three years, he has been an incredible friend to me, a loyal friend. He's that friend that the Proverbs talk about that sticks closer than a brother. Um, and I'm incre- incredibly grateful for you, Bobby. Um, he showed up on, on a Sunday that I announced that we had to let the band go because we had no money. I don't know if anybody remembers this three years ago. We're like, hey, we just can't afford to pay him. And then Bobby comes up afterwards and like, first Sunday here visiting, he's like, well, I, I do worship. Can I help out? And we ended up hiring him. Um, and he, he's still going to be around our church. We're so glad that he and Kayla and their kids, hey, Kayla, <laughs> are, are still going to be a part of our church. But Bobby, since he's a full-time teacher, is filling his, fulfilling his calling to be a teacher and, and work with kids um, students, and, and we're just so grateful that he is able to move now completely <laughs> to focus on that in his, um, for his job. So we're so grateful to Bobby. Um, what I was going to say, um, the, the word that I think best describes Bobby, he is the worship director, worship leader, unlike anyone else, that is authentic. Um, I really think that's the word that describes him, that he is real, like the Sawyer talked about last week, that with our vibrant community, that we are real with each other and with God, that we, we are real together because that's how we grow together when we're real, and I think Bobby, more than anybody else as a worship leader, has been real with us, that he shared his high points, his struggles. Um, sometimes I'm like, Bobby, what are you saying? <laughs> like, whoa, you went deep this morning, you know, sharing about, but I'm so grateful that you have shared your heart, shared some struggles that you have gone through, because each one of us is going through struggles as well, and when you can have someone on stage that says, hey, I'm real, I think we all can be real together and realize, hey, we're all growing, we're all learning, and I'm so grateful that you are so authentic, Bobby. So, um, I have a little gift for you. We have something else coming. It didn't make, well, UPS was supposed to deliver it yesterday, but it didn't quite make it. So we're going to get it to you this week, but Bobby, I'm so grateful for you and your three years uh, of service here, and and we're going to have you back up here, I'm sure, (laughs) to to lead and fill in and play guitar and all sorts of stuff. But thank you so much, Bobby. Could we give Bobby another round of applause? Don't don't tell the governor we just hugged. But yeah, I'm so glad you guys are here, like I mentioned, if you're new. So today we're going to have our worship service. We've got a couple, uh, an exciting guest that's going to be coming up at the end, so make sure you guys stick around. If you're watching online, stick around um, for that. And then today, like I mentioned, this is our last day as Stapleton Church. We are announcing our new name, which is... You got to stick around to the business meeting. We're going to share it at the business meeting. <laughs> Man, I'm just really uh, egging you guys on. Um, so the business meeting today at 11 a.m. We have decided to do this 100% Zoom. You can be here if you want to get on our Wi-Fi and check out Zoom. But we're going to be at 11 a.m. on Zoom. So if you're watching this, um, if you're a part of our church, please join. Um, members are the ones who can vote, but we want everyone to be a part about to hear about the things that are going on in our church to vote on some things that are going on in the life of our church so and to hear about our new name and some new direction stuff uh, some things that we're doing as a church so we're going to do that another big transition and i need to invite up um gary lidholm so gary would you please come on up i'm going to make you come on up um gary yes can we give gary a round of applause so gary is finishing up his sixth year uh, on his, so his second term, the sec- full second term as an elder on our elder board, and we have kind of a policy that the, the seventh year has to be a sabbatical year, but Gary has <laughs> served so faithfully for so many years, and we are so grateful that you've served in this way. Um, and I don't know if you guys know this too, but Gary has led this church as one of the shepherds of our church on our elder board through some of the hardest times this church has ever gone through. Uh, A time with a lead pastor that had to uh, resign, that he led through two years without a lead pastor on the board to help um, bring me here, get us through some financial difficulties, um, through a lot of difficulties in our church, and he has been faithful the entire time. He has been steadfast, and I think he is an example that I want to look up to, and I have looked up to, and I hope the rest of you guys have as well. You might say, well, I didn't agree with that decision, or how you handled that. Well, yeah, that's what happens, but Gary is the one who's been through a whole bunch of stuff over the last six years. So I am very grateful to him personally. I'm going to miss you a lot being on the board. Even though you guys probably don't see some of the things he does behind the scenes, he does so much. Um, He has led, he has preached, he has um, counseled people, (laughs) counseled me, I'm sure, um, provided a lot of wisdom to our church, and we should all be thankful to him 
for that. Um, Juanita, his wife as well, has been just a faithful uh, member of our church, has helped out so many people with the hosp- your hospitality and your home hospitality here in the, with the cafe, leading in women's ministry, and, and you guys have co- helped lead a community group. We're just so grateful for you guys, and we're glad you guys are still going to be a part of the church as well. Um, just in a little bit different position, Gary is now the leader of our safety team, so if you ever have questions about that, you can talk with Gary as well. Um, so it, your just role is changing. It's not, not, <laughs> not ending. Um, and we do have a, a gift for you. Um, so it's, here's, a, here's a card too, and it's a plaque. It says, for your example, your leadership, your faithfulness, and your heart, thank you. So this is on behalf of the entire church. We want to say thank you, Gary. I'll give you a hug. Don't tell the joke. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much, Gary. Um, Yeah. Yep. So that's going to be good. We have one uh, new elder candidate that we're voting on uh, later today, so make sure you're here to vote for Chris Webb uh, to come on the board as well. So those are some of the changes that are going on. Um, Business meeting announced at 11 a.m. Zoom, uh, all, all Zoom for that. Um, and we want to encourage you guys to give um, generously. That We're going to take a moment here to give. If you're watching online, you can find uh, at stapletonchurch.com slash give, or there's that little gray button that says give on our website. Um, we want to encourage everybody to give online um, because you give first, save second, and live on the rest. I think that's just a good philosophy with your money. We don't say if at the end of the month I have a little bit extra money or if I have like a $5 in my pocket when I'm at church, maybe I'll give. No, no, no. We give to God first. We save for ourselves second and live on the rest. So I want to encourage you guys to do that and to give generously to our church. Uh, we have, I think, one TV screen. I don't know if the video is going to be working, but you guys online will watch it while I pray for that offering. Um, Lord God, we are grateful for what you have done in our church with the leaders that you have placed in our church. And even though there's some transitions with those leaders, um, Lord God, we are grateful that you continue to be the chief shepherd of our church uh, to move us forward. And I pray, Lord, that you'd be with us this morning as we give. Would we be able to give cheerfully? to bring glory to your name, and to further your kingdom here on the earth. And I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Transformational teaching. Vibrant community. Passionate worship. Bold outreach. Generous living. Next-gen investment. Multiplication mindset. At our core, the heart of our church. The series continues at Stapleton Church. All right, so we are going to continue our series today. Two other little details, because I'm sure some of you are wondering. Chase Napier, our new worship director, is going to be starting in two weeks. So uh, make sure that you're here to welcome him in two weeks. So our plan right now is to continue outdoors. I know it's already getting cold, right? Continue outdoors through October. No matter what, November 1st, we're going to look at uh, making it possible to maybe do a little sooner because they have eased up a little bit on the restrictions. So we might be able to get inside a little sooner. Oh, there's my message for today. Uh, blowing in the wind. Thank you, Casey. Um, so that that's just a little couple things coming up. Um, yeah, make sure you guys bring blankets next week, right? Um, yeah, yeah. The last few weeks it's been too hot, right? Um, so last week Sawyer was uh, giving the message on vibrant community, and we're well, it's gone now. We're just going to wing it today. Um, It's okay. I I got it. Um, So what we're going to do today is continue that series at our core. And today's... I got it all up here, right? Um, (laughs) Today's uh, message is going to continue our series at our core as we look at another one of our core values that we're introducing. We're really taking three sets of core values that we've had in the past and we're condensing it down into one set of core values that can help um, with our leadership and and then we can take that and and just uh, move forward together as a church. And today's core value is bold outreach. Bold, okay? Bold outreach is what we're talking about today and what that means as a church. And I say that because when I first got here uh, three years ago, or just over three years ago, there was a, this church is amazing because it's like we're, we're one of the only churches maybe in the world that meets in a hangar, right? 
That's a pretty cool thing. Hangar 61, you see the 61 all over the place because this is a historic building on the historic registry, which is pretty amazing that we have it built in 1951 and protected, and, and now we're getting this roof almost fixed. Doesn't it look good? Okay, we're, we're taking care of this building because it's God's gift to us that he stewarded us, and that's a really special thing. But when I first got here, if you looked around, it was very easy to see that this was Hangar 61, but it was hard to find out that there's a church that meets here as well, Okay. And some of you maybe remember that, even like on the sign on the corner, in big print it said Hangar 61, and in small little letters it said, Home of Stapleton Fellowship Church. Um, and, and that was kind of how it was in the building. I remember talking, and I've had this conversation multiple pe- with multiple people throughout the last few years, and, and I'll say, oh, uh, you know, it turn, turns out that I'm a pastor, and they say, oh, which church? Stapleton Church, where is that? Okay, Hangar 61, and they'll say something like, oh, I've been in that building a bunch of times. I've even had someone say, oh yeah, I went to AA there for three years in a row. I didn't know there was a church there. Okay? And I remember this, and I was like, oh, this is kind of weird. And we've, we've tried to change some of that and make some, some signage a little bit uh, bigger. But one of the things was like, are, are, are we a light to the community? Do people even know we're here? And I remember the message that was given like the week before I got here was by Barry Hughes. He was the interim executive pastor. He gave a message. And in it, um, I'm, I'm going to read just a, a few of his words. He he said, um, let me encourage you, don't be ashamed to be a church. This is Stapleton Fellowship Church that just happens to meet in a historic hangar. The most important thing about this location is that it's our church. What goes on in this place is eternal. The church is eternal, a called out people on purpose, a movement. A hangar is not eternal. This place needs to shine as a church. And I remember reading that, and I've shared that with you guys um, before, but I, I think that that's a challenge that we've been trying to accept. Two years ago, I v- gave a message called <laughs> Light It Up, because that's what we were called to do, to light it up in this community, to let people know that there is a presence of God here in this area, because there are very, very few churches in this area, and we are called to be that light in the darkness, and that means that we've got to step up our boldness a little bit. We've got to step up our boldness to let people know that we are here, that we're present, that we're among them, that we're a light shining in the darkness. So in this series, our core values, we've, we've looked, we're going to have seven of them total, but we've looked so far at transformational teaching that we teach God's word accurately and relevantly to transform lives. And then last week, Sawyer, um, who's now stepped into that role of uh, adult ministries as our associate pastor, he talked about our vibrant community, that we are real with each other to grow together. And today, this core value of bold outreach means that we are boldly sent to seek and love the lost. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to look at a few different scriptures of where we pull this core value from. But we are boldly sent as a church. We are boldly sent as a people, as individuals representing the church when we go out of here. We are boldly sent to seek and love the lost. And that's what we've got to do. So the the main passage I'm going to look at is, is Matthew chapter 5. And I know I did preach on this two years ago. We're going to look at a few other scriptures as well. But in Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16, we read, You are the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world, but yet when he's addressing his followers, his disciples, he says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So Jesus says, as followers, as the church, as the people of God, we are to be a light that people are supposed to see. We don't hide lights. We don't cover them up with with whatever. We don't put a tarp over the light because then you couldn't see it all. And in the darkness, and we live in a time and in a world of darkness, a time of pandemic, of depression, of increasing suicide rates, and um, crime here is at its highest level in over a decade. Okay, there's a depression um, that I, I, I've seen is somewhere this summer ninefold what it has been in the past. That, that we live in a time of great darkness, and the world needs light. Our city needs light. It needs hope. And that's what Jesus is telling us. We are the light of the world. We as individuals walking around with a hope inside of our chest that other people don't know about, we can be the light that they need for the darkness in their lives. 
We can't hide it. We can't hide it. Now, now I know some of you guys uh, may, may do this, but, but when you buy like a new car, some of you have had the, the uh, time to do that, when you buy a new car, do you just park in your garage and leave it there? No, you take it out, you use it, and you're kind of like, hey, look at my new car, right? You kind of feel good riding around in your new car. When you get new shoes even, you don't put them in your closet and leave them there for the next five years. You wear them. Now, I know some of you do that. Some of you guys, like, get the new clothes and you keep it in there for a few months, like, and then you wear it, right? But, but most of us who are sane, <laughs> most of us take out and we're like, we want to show off the new shoes, show off the new car, the new coat that you just got, the new Patagonia coat. Some of you are like, I wish I would have brought it today. Just got it at Snea Grab. Okay, you know uh, th- that we do these because we want to say, hey, this is what I got. I want to show it off. Well, God himself has bought us at the highest price, <laughs> the blood of his son, He has paid immensely for us, and he wants to show us off. He wants the world to see that I can redeem even the the most desperate, sinful people in the world. Look at us. And if I can give hope to those people, I want other people to see it. He wants to show us off. And that's why he says, I want you to be a light in the world, in the darkness. I want you to be a light. And this light is not supposed to just be like a little bit of flicker. It's not like the 40-watt light bulb. No, we're talking about as many lumens as you can imagine. We're blasting light. That's what Jesus wants us to do. And that's why we say that we are sent boldly. We are sent boldly. In 2 Corinthians, and I have no idea where my notes are now. It says in, in, in the book of Acts, I, I, I counted this week because there's a word that occurs over and over again, and it's the word boldly. And if you read through the book of Acts, which was written by the historian Luke, who we've been going through the Gospel of Luke, he wrote about the early church, about the things that they were doing, and he used this word boldly, and sometimes it's translated in the NIV with a few other different words. But that word um, that can be translated as boldly, it occurs ten times in that one book. Ten times. When... Um, Uh, Luke describes how Paul preached, how Peter preached, how they did their acts. It was boldly, with boldness, out in the open. They did it boldly. And I think that boldness is supposed to describe what we do as followers of Jesus. We are called to be bold and and to go out among people. And and this means that sometimes we're going to stand out. It's going to feel awkward to us when we're bold. Um, our community groups are launching this week, and we want everyone in a community group. They're huge for us. Sawyer talked about it last week, and if you haven't signed up, go to stapletonchurch.com slash community groups. You can still get in one. They're launching this week. But in our community groups this week, what we're going to be discussing, one of the questions is, on a scale of 1 to 10, what's your boldness level when it comes to your faith? And let's just be honest, because some of us are like, Matt, nobody except the person sitting next to me even knows I'm here in church, Right? Nobody knows that even I'm a Christian except that person right there. And some of you are like, everyone in my life knows I'm a Christian. Okay? It's a little cold and windy, huh? And we all have different levels of boldness, but what I believe we're called to is is to grow a little bit in boldness. If you're a one, I want you to become a two this week. (laughs) Okay? If you're an eight, can you move to a nine? Wherever you are in your boldness level, I think we can all take one more step in boldness. Because we are called to boldly, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Okay, no, that's Star Trek. We are boldly sent. And I think it's, I use the phrase sent because God has sent us. Jesus has sent us. His last commission was to therefore go and make disciples. The last thing he said before he ascended into heaven is therefore go and be my witnesses. Okay, we are boldly sent. We are sent on a mission. And that means we don't just wait for people to come to us. Now, I was a pastor for uh, five and a half years in Nebraska before coming here. And when I got there, the church didn't even have a website. And, and when I got there, I was like, well, we need to have a website. And I remember talking with one of the leaders in the church, and he was very, very old school. Um, and he said, I said, we got to have a website. He's like, well, why? I was like, well, that's how people find churches nowadays. Um, kind of like how everyone finds a church nowadays. And I said, and we, we've really got to put the sermons that we give online. We, you know, we got to put the sermons up there so people can listen to them. And he said, I just remember he said, why? If they don't show up, why should they be able to listen to it? And that was kind of the old school mindset. Well, they should come, right? And I'm like, well, what about the people who are too chicken to come? Or or, or like, do I agree with this yet? I don't know. We can give them the gospel straight into their home, into their earbuds, right? We got to do it. And we figured out a way to do that. And that guy actually became a champion of all that we were doing. It just had a little change in mindset. But the point was, we've got to go out. We can't just wait for people to show up here. 
Right now, they're like, COVID, oh, I don't want to show up. Okay, I got to wear a mask. Oh, that's going to be hard to do. Oh, what if someone's, uh, you know, not wearing a mask? Okay, people are like, worried about coming in person. It's cold out here, right? Or f- really hot, depending on the Sunday. It- it's hard to come to church right now. And it's just getting harder and harder and harder. Uh, one of the, the questions that I've heard asked by, by some missionaries or some people that, that are planting churches in the U.S. are just imagine, just imagine you were invited to go to mosque. Okay? Imagine you were invited by someone to go to a mosque to show up on a Friday and to hear the imam deliver his message. Would you go? How awkward would you feel? You have no idea. Okay, do I stand? Do I sit? Do I kneel? I don't know any of these traditions, right? I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, where I'm supposed to go. Uh, you know, will I fit in there? Will I look awkward? Will they be the only person like me there? Okay. So that, just in your imagine, just to feel what that would be like is what a lot of people are like just coming to church. So that's why we are boldly sent. We've got to go to other people. The great thing about the church is it's not a location. It's not a building, even though we sometimes refer to this as the church, the building. But it's the people. So when we leave here, we are still the church. And we are boldly sent to people around us, to our neighbors who maybe have never been to church, to one of my neighbors who, who said, Matt, um, if I went to the church, the, the place would burn down, right? That's what he told me. And I'm like, well, great, I can go to you and I can talk with you. I can share my faith with you. I can love you. We are boldly sent to our neighbors. In, in, in this core value, it's we are boldly sent to seek and love the lost, That might sound a little strange to you because there's a phrase from the scriptures when Jesus talks about his mission that he says that he is boldly sent to seek and save the lost. In fact, that's in Luke 19, 10. Jesus says, I am sent to seek and save the lost. But that's the greatest thing about our mission. We don't have to save anyone. Those lost people who are terrified to come to church or think that's the weirdest thing, I wouldn't fit in, I'd burn the place down because of all the sin in my life. Okay, we just have to love them. We have to tell them about Jesus. We have to invite them, yes, but we have to love them. We don't have to save them. Sometimes when I think about people in my life and I'm like, they are so far away from God, whether it's because of sin or or just some hurt in their past, what happened to them at the hands of a pastor or in a church, or, or maybe they're just come from a completely different worldview. Maybe they're the Muslim in our country. And I think about these people I know and when I'm like, if I had to get them from where they are and it seems like they're so far away from God and if I had to take them all the way from there to the place of faith where they're coming to church and and tithing and, and serving like, oh my gosh, that's so far. How the heck can I get them there? Well, good thing we don't have to do it. We don't have to save anyone because Jesus has already done it. That's the amazing thing. That was his mission to seek and save the lost. Our job is to seek and love them and God will work in their hearts to save them. It's the Holy Spirit who saves people, not us. And once you realize that, man, it lifts a burden off you. And when you do talk to those people so far from God, and you're just like, well, my job is just to love them, to let them know that I do follow Jesus, to invite them. Yeah, maybe you say some things. Maybe there's some challenging conversations as you boldly share your faith with someone. But we just have to love them. Isn't that a freeing thing? And I think that love that that we give to people when, when we show them in tangible ways that, that God loves us and through us he loves them, that it moves people because our world is greatly desiring. They're hungry for love. Man, there is so much hatred in our world today. So much anger, so much bitterness. People are fighting about masks like I've talked about, about an empty seat on the Supreme Court. Man, it's like, People are going to rip each other's throats out, it feels like. Man, the things that people are saying about each other, it's crazy. I see these posts on Facebook and Instagram, I'm like, man, how, like, people hate each other, it seems like. Because of their viewpoint on this, like, tiny little thing. And maybe you're like, Matt, that's a huge thing. Okay, yes. But in the grand scheme of things, our whole nation's a small thing. Did you know that? Really? (laughs) Really is. uh, we, We think the United States is great, but... Man, nations and empires and come and on with the church is the thing that stays, right? The gates of hell will not prevail against it. That's what Jesus said. You know, these things that we are fighting over in our country are, are really small things. Even a pandemic, it's going to be gone. It's going to be gone, hopefully sooner rather than later. 
these things that we're fighting about and worrying about show us that our world needs love now more than ever. And when we do love people in real ways, in tangible ways, through our words and through our actions, it's going to stand out and be even brighter in our world. When we bring a meal to a neighbor, when we drive someone to their cancer treatments, when we sit with them and listen to them as they're crying because someone in their life has, has died. When we do these small acts of love, it's going to stand out so much into our world and it's going to shine a light into the darkness. And that's why we go boldly, because our world needs love. We are boldly sent to seek and love the lost. Because there are so many lost people around us. So many people here in Denver. We've talked about some of the statistics. There are very, very few people who go to church on a Sunday morning. Especially in our part of Denver, northeast Denver. There are very few churches, very few people in church. There's people that are lost. Jesus himself said that if you do not believe, you stand condemned already. That's what Jesus said. We stand on our own condemned because of our sin and because of our own choices. We have chosen to walk away from God. We are lost. We are in darkness. That's why there is so much despair and anger, sadness and depression and suicide in our world. Because people are lost. And they need the hope of Jesus Christ and the hope that only he can bring. And that's why Jesus himself boldly came. He was boldly sent by God to this earth. And he walked around and he had no problem to let people know that he was the son of God through his miracles, through his actions, by serving people, by washing their feet, by loving the people that nobody else would go near. Jesus hung out with the outcasts, with even the prostitutes, because he wanted to show the love of God to them. And he came to seek them and to save them. And that's why he even went to die on the cross to boldly stand up on a cross so that all could see. And when they look to him and put their faith in Jesus and what he has done in his death and his atonement on the cross, that they could have salvation, that they could go from darkness to light, from despair to hope, from death and hell to eternal life, here and forever. And if Jesus did that for us, we are sent by him in the same way. One of my favorite verses in jo- is John 20, 21, where Jesus says, in the same way as the Father sent me, I am sending you. And if Jesus came that way boldly, we can do the same. So that's why this core value we're going to have at our church is we're, we're turning up the notch on our boldness. We're turning up the notch on our boldness individually and as a church that we're going to say we're going to stand out even more. We've been doing outreach, but we're going to be even bolder in how we do it, right? So we've been really pushing you guys to join a community group. I hope that you guys do it. If, if you haven't done it, please do it. But the second thing I want you guys to do, everyone in our church, is to serve somewhere. We want you to choose community, but we also want you to serve somewhere. So if you are here in person or if you're watching online, what I want you to do today is go to stapletonchurch.com slash serve. we got all these short little uh, thing, stapletonchurch.com slash serve, and there's a form there. We want everyone in our church to fill this out. There's ways that you can serve here in our church. There's also ways that you can serve through local outreach. Okay, that means here in our neighborhoods to serve, whether it's through the Denver Rescue Mission serving a meal, whether it's through WizKids. That's one I want to highlight today. We've been partnering with WizKids for a few different years. It's a Christian organization that goes into schools and mentors kids that need help. Um, they are doing a lot of digital mentoring this year, right? It's, it's going to be online this year, so it's going to be even easier for you to, to reach out to some kids in need in our area. And I want to encourage you to do that. So if you go to that stapletonchurch.com slash serve, you can fill out that form and, and connect and say, hey, I'd be a mentor. Maybe once a week I, I could spare a couple hours after school, you know, for the kid after school. Maybe you're not in school still. Um, but I, I could help a kid. That's one local outreach thing that you can do. Uh, another thing, I just have in the form uh, something called bold outreach because I want us to do something really bold as a church. I don't even know what it is. But I think some of you guys do. And I think through prayer and a team coming together, we can do something really bold in our community this fall. So I, I want you to fill that out. If you do that, I'll, I'll get in touch with you and we're going to put something together. So that's some local outreach opportunities that you can do, but there's also global outreach things. And in a moment, I'm going to turn it over to our special guest for today, um, uh, Beth Ann, there she is. Uh, in just a second. But I want to encourage everyone to get involved somewhere. If you're like on that one to 10 scale, I'm a one or two when it comes to my faith, you know. 
two people know that I, I, I believe in Jesus. <laughs> okay, but I want you to take a step and maybe it's by going to stapletonchurch.com slash serve and getting a part of a group because then you can go with some other people. It makes it a little easier. But you can go down and, and serve the homeless or you can be part of an outreach ministry or you can serve somewhere so you can get a little bit bolder because we can all just ramp up our boldness just a little bit. Let's turn that notch a little bit, right? As individuals, as a church. Because we are boldly sent to seek and love the lost. And that's why our core value is bold outreach. So I really mean it right now. Get out your phones as um, our, our guest comes on up here. And if Jimmy, if you come up here, do, while they're doing it, get out your phones. Go to stapletonchurch.com slash sir. Fill out that form. If you're watching online, you can pause right now. Fill out that form, okay? It, it's, it's what we're going to do. And I'm going to say a prayer as, as these guys come up. Um, Lord God, you've called us as a church to ramp up our boldness, to turn up the notch because our world is getting darker and it needs light more than ever before. And I pray that you'd help us be the light to this world, that we would shine in the darkness and that we would do it boldly. We would do it boldly just like your son did. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, ben, do we have mics for these guys? Okay. Oh, he's got it in his pocket. Okay, so this is Jimmy Smith. He leads our global outreach. You know, you guys love Jimmy. Um, and this is Beth Ann Erickson, all the way from Estonia. She's been here this summer, but um, here from Estonia, our missionary. So you're going to hear a little bit about what she's doing with global outreach, and I'll turn it over to you guys. Thanks, Matt. Really appreciate that. Uh, again, my name is Jimmy Smith. I help out with the global outreach stuff here at our church, and I am delighted to be here with Beth Ann today. I get to see Beth Ann like. I don't know, two or three times a week, it feels like, on Zoom. Like, we're communicating all the time and texting and emailing, but some of you guys don't know Beth Ann as well. Beth Ann is from our church, and she serves as a missionary in Estonia, and uh, she's doing some bold outreach stuff, and we thought it was a great illustration today to share a little bit about what Beth Ann's doing, because she's in town with us before she heads back to Estonia. So, a couple things Beth Ann's going to share with us today, and then some opportunities for you guys to maybe jump in with, but Beth Ann, I want you to have the mic for most of the time today. Give us, and a lot of people are new to our church and even online um, uh, to our church. Would you just share with us a little bit your background and how you got involved in missions, how you got involved in our church, and how you ended up in Estonia? Hi. Um, well, first of all, um, I moved to the Denver area, I think, in 2006, and uh, I've been a believer for a very long time. I think I accepted Christ when I was like five years old or something like that, and very involved with youth group growing up and everything. Uh, I had always gone to bigger churches, though, like really big churches, where you can um, be involved, but um, maybe people don't always notice if you're not there. And so I moved to Stapleton. I used to live over by the town center over there, and I was a teacher in Denver Public Schools. And um, I was looking for a church home, and I heard of this church in our neighborhood, and I thought, well, that's cool. And it was meeting in the school right over here. And... Um, but I thought, well, that will be scary because if I decide to go snowboarding or mountain biking on Sunday and I don't go to church and I might be out walking my dog around the neighborhood and people will see me and they'll know, like, I wasn't at church and I might be held accountable. And so for me to come to this church, which was a little bit smaller when it was getting started, was like a huge step and I was nervous about that. And so I started coming, but I was kind of like just showing up on Sundays if it wasn't a good snow day or a, a, if it was a rainy day and I couldn't go mountain biking. Um, and then somehow I joined a community group and um, that was a huge step for me on my own as an adult. And it just happened to be that the leader of the community group was also the youth pastor and they kept challenging me to serve in turbulence. And I thought, well, that's kind of scary. Like, I'm not good enough, or how can God use me? I'm so broken and I'm so weak. And so every um, time I, I, saw, I met at community group, like I had another excuse of why like, I couldn't serve. And then finally one time I just broke down and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do it. And I said, I'll show up, but I had a whole list of things that I wasn't gonna do. And I shared that with them because I was afraid. And it's funny because I'm a teacher and I work with middle school, I worked with middle school and high school kids every day. But I was like, sharing the gospel, like that's big. I don't wanna mess that up. And I just had this like wrong perception, like I had to be perfect before I could serve, or like I just had to be good enough. But really like how good is good enough? And we're never gonna be perfect. And God wants to use us where we're at. He wants us to be bold and to do outreach. As Matt was just saying, he wants to use all of us. And so, then after I started serving in the youth group, Jimmy started challenging me to go on missions trips because I had the whole summer off and I had time. 
And so at first I was like, oh, I've been on a missions trip before in high school and I don't know if I want to do it again. And I like to go uh, sit on the beach all summer long and I didn't want to give that up. But um, just like serving in the youth group in turbulence, all of a sudden I broke down and I was like, okay, I'll go to Mexico. And so I went to Mexico a few times and then all of a sudden Jimmy said, well, this summer we're going to Estonia. We have some missionaries there that, that we're gonna um, support. We've been partnering with them. And I told Jimmy, I don't want to go to Estonia. I don't even know where that is. And then um, I saw that it was right next to Sweden in Europe, and I had never traveled overseas, and I had always wanted to visit Sweden because I have family there, and I'm Swedish. And so I said, okay, I'll go. And before we went, we had a team, and we did all kinds of research, and I learned that Estonia was one of the most atheistic countries in the world, and I thought, this is going to be really hard. And I was like really nervous, and I thought it was going to be so scary because it's a bunch of atheists, and I have a lot of atheistic friends, and they're kind of just like this. There's a lot of pushback, and they make fun of God. And so I had like this idea that it was just going to be so hard on this missions trip. But I went there, and we were there for like two weeks, and we were able to share Christ with a girl named Lily. And that was life-changing for me because we were in one of the most atheistic countries in the world, and here we were sitting and talking and praying with a girl who just accepted Christ. And for me, that was just unbelievable. It was amazing to see how God can work through us, and we don't have to be perfect. He knows we're broken, and he wants to, he wants to use us where we're at. And so um, right then and there, as I, was, I, excuse me, as I was sitting in Estonia, I knew God was doing something in my life, but I had no idea what, because I loved my life here. I loved living in Stapleton. I loved going to church here. I loved my job. Um, I loved having the summers off as a teacher and going to the beach all summer long, um, but God was really tugging on my heart and challenging me. And so after a few more short-term trips to Estonia, I was moving there as a missionary. And I don't know if you guys are like me, but I always thought like missionaries are those people over there. And I always thought like they were kind of weird <laughs> to do what they do, but it's amazing. But I always thought I'm not one of those people, not me, you know? And so it's just amazing to see how God transforms us. And the more that we step out and love others and boldly serve, the more we learn um, how much he loves us. And he, when he uses us, it's truly amazing um, how it transforms us too. And we grow closer to him. I love it. I love her story. And I think it can speak to our hearts as well. And it really ties in with today. So real quick, what are some of the things that you're currently doing bold outreach on in Estonia? Like, how are you doing that? How are you encouraging it? What are some of the key things you're, you're working on in country right now? So um, my key ministry areas, I have a few of them. Um, the first thing is I partner with a church that has been around in Estonia for over 100 years called Kolgata Church. And um, it's a pretty big church for the area. And I serve with the middle school youth group. And the middle school youth group meets on Friday nights. So they're meeting right now in the church every week. And I just love middle schoolers. Like, they're amazing. They're going through so much change. And I just love working with that age group. And so um, I'm in charge of all the games. And then I really connect with the kids and just have fun with them. And then we do summer camps and things like that. So my other focus area is youth camps. I work with youth in Estonia. And during the summer, mostly, there are camps just all the time because it's so dark there that when the sun finally comes out for a couple months in the summer, everyone just wants to be outside. So if you hold a camp, the kids will come. And it's amazing for outreach. So not all the camps are connected to the church. There's also secular camps, but we have the ability to share from the Bible, to share about Jesus. And it's amazing to see how God is working through that and throughout the years to see the transition from like barely having an opportunity to sharing at all to now people are asking and asking for more, more Bible studies and more. They want to ask questions about God and what we believe. And it's a huge platform and it's amazing. And then my another focus area is the cooking group ministry. And um, that started when I moved to Estonia through my weakness. Like I said earlier, God can use us through our weakness. And I moved to this country. I'm all by myself in Estonia. Um, I'm still learning the language. When I moved, I knew how to say, like, hello, and um, a few other words, thank you, and goodbye, and whatever. And so um, 
I had a hard time finding things in the grocery store and I used to go to the grocery store and just buy whatever I wanted and now I'm on this new budget, a missionary budget and so I'm trying to figure out what to buy and how to cook things, all the appliances are different and I remembered that at the one of the first camps I went to I met a girl in culinary school and I just connected with her and so from that weakness um, this ministry grew because these girls would come over and help me with grocery shopping and cooking local recipes and for them it was really fun because they didn't have a place to like get together after school outside of the church and so they came to my apartment and then I started challenging them to bring their friends because they were saying how much fun this was and if they could do it again and I said well bring your friends that don't know Jesus and we can share with them and they just started coming every week and then the group started growing and multiplying and spreading around the country and it's just really cool to see now other youth are starting their own cooking groups and their kitchens and so um, it's awesome to see once again through our weakness how God can use us even though we're not perfect. All right and I know there's even more going on than that that's a, a great uh, snapshot of those things. Um, how can we help? We are Beth Ann's sending church. Like, we are her, her like, I don't know, support base. Like, her, her, her emotional support base, financial support base, uh, ministry support base. We send teams. But, Beth Ann, how can we help you right now? I know you're trying to get back to Estonia. Give us some uh, key thoughts. So, right now, one of the amazing things that our church is doing is the focus team. As I mentioned earlier, we have this cooking group ministry, we have youth camps, we have visiting uh, vision teams and short-term mission teams, and um, there are always people visiting and different things going on, but our ministry has reached a bottleneck. So it's like we need more space. And so I have this vision to share the gospel with over 2,000 youth during the next five years, and that vision is so much bigger than me. Um, and it's amazing to see how God is working through it. Right now, uh, we have the Stapleton Focus team, and we've been spending a lot of time with this team during the last couple of man months growing it and, and then shaping it, and it's really cool. We're at the point now where we're actually making offers on a location. We've been making offers and meeting every week, every other week on Zoom, the first two weeks, uh, or first and third week of the month. Uh, or, yeah, first and third week, sorry. And uh, it's just really cool to see how God can use each of you, your gifts, your talents, your abilities, um, to partner in ministry and just see what God does with it. So that's one really cool thing. If you haven't joined the Focus team yet and you're interested, you should talk to Jimmy about it because it's, it's amazing to see. And I'm so grateful for everyone on that team and all that you're doing. Um, I'm grateful for all that you're doing as a church to partner with me. Thank you so much. I'm so appreciative. And for those of you that are already ministry partners who pray and give, thank you so much. And if you want to learn more, I'm here to share with you. I'm around. I've been meeting people over at the Stanley Marketplace for coffee, for lunch, for dinner, whatever, whenever you have time. I'm there I'm meeting people outside from a distance, and it's just amazing to share with you. And I would love to grow my partnerships. I'm 93% funded right now. And my goal is to get to 100% within the next few weeks before I um, go back to Estonia. And so that means I need another like $500 a month in ministry partnerships. And I'm sure if God calls us to do it, he's going to provide. And so um, please continue to pray for that. And if you're interested in hearing more, I just love to share. It's a blessing to share. Um, even if you just have questions and want to know how you can pray or you want to talk about it, please reach out to me. I'm here for you guys. So thank you. All right, and last thing, um, prayer requests. One of the things all of us can do is be praying for Beth Ann. She's got prayer cards out here today. My kids have them over here. We'll have some. Put one on your fridge. Remember to pray for Beth Ann. But what are some key things we can be praying for you right now? Well, where I live, it's a very um, physically, spiritually dark place. So just pray for um, me as I go back. It can be kind of lonely there. I'm there alone. Um, it's a culture that is very different than here. Some things may look similar on the surface, but um, it's physically dark too, and so that affects a lot of things like your vitamin D levels. And maybe that doesn't sound like a big deal. I thought it wouldn't impact me because like, I'm a happy person. I don't get depressed and all this stuff, but you definitely feel it. So please pray for that. Um, please pray for my remaining financial support. And please pray for this uh, process that our um, Stapleton Focus team is going through right now. It's really cool to see what's happening, but um, please pray for our next steps and that we're able to secure a location and that um, 
we can that God will work with through us to fulfill this vision to share the gospel and follow up week after week after week with over 2,000 youth. That's huge. Um, but if God's in it, he can do it, you know, and, and so that's pretty amazing. So please pray for that, and just pray for changed hearts in Estonia. Pray for kingdom growth, kingdom impact. All right. Well, thank you so much. I'm freezing up here. I'm sure you guys are freezing too, but let's pray as we end our service today and pray for Beth Ann. And I just want to encourage you, if you have any time this week, please meet with Beth Ann. She's only here for another week. You can email her on her prayer card. We're going to have some links up on the website and on the um, Facebook page real soon uh, where you can connect with her this week. Be praying for her. And listen, let's help get her over the top. We need to send her back 100% funded. If you could uh, meet with her and talk with her about that, that would be amazing. Again, on her support team. I'm on her support team. I am proud to be a part of your support team. And uh, aren't we glad for the be work Beth Ann is doing in Estonia? Uh, may God be praised for all of that. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this morning. Uh, what a great message. Help us to be bold in our outreach. Help us to be people who uh, love you so much that we're willing to share it with other people and to make sacrifices in our lives to, to share with other people and to grow your kingdom. Thank you for the work that Beth Ann is doing. I pray that you would help her with these things that she'd mentioned, and especially the dark times that are over there, the loneliness that she faces, that, that, uh, that she'd be surrounded by friends. She'd feel encouragement from her churches and her, her home church here especially. I pray that you'd help her get the needed funding that she needs to, to top things off, to get back to Estonia quickly, and all of these ministry projects that are so vital to reach the lost in Estonia, to see your name made great there. Uh, be with all of us as we seek to boldly outreach for you. In your great name we pray. Amen. God bless. Thanks for being here today. Take care. Make sure you grab one of her prayer cards on the way out. Hey, this is Matt Wolf again, lead pastor of Stapleton Church. If you have benefited at all from our ministry today, I want to encourage you to do three things. First, subscribe. Subscribe on whatever device you're using so that you can make sure that you get our messages and services every single week. The second thing I want to do is I want to get to know you. There's some people that have been joining us online this summer in the pandemic, and I still haven't had a chance to get to know you, and I care about you. I love you. I want to be your pastor. So if you could, fill out the form at stapletonchurch.com slash new, and I want to reach out to you personally to get to know you. Please do that. And the third thing is to give. If you have benefited from our ministry, if we've helped you take a step in your journey to follow after Jesus, please go to stapletonchurch.com slash give and set up a recurring gift to our church so that it would not only support our ministry, but our ministry around the world so that you would be helped to follow Jesus and other people would be helped to follow Jesus so we can multiply our effectiveness in this world please go to stapletonchurch.com slash give, and I will see you next week.